Let's get back to David at Milken with a special guest. David? Thank you, Carl. Yeah, we are joined by Apollo uh, Global CEO Mark Rowan. Mentioned it earlier, of course. Um, and it's good to have you here, particularly on this day. Thank you, David. Um, and let's just start off on that news, because I am curious to get your perspective on the banking system right now, particularly the regional banks. Does First Republic sort of put an end to this, as I've called it, mini banking crisis? Uh, maybe phase one. I mean, I, I think this first part of the crisis, totally foreseeable. Mark-to-mark -mark losses on Treasury, knowable. Deposit structure, knowable. The thing that I always find of interest is what didn't we know? What we didn't know is that $42 billion could leave the banking system in four hours without a line. I mean, to me, that is the takeaway out of these three bank failures. What is the business of regional banking going forward? If you pay more for your deposits, if you have increased costs from operations, from regulation, and all of a sudden you don't know about the stickiness of your deposits, are you in the loan business anymore? Do you need to remake your business entirely? I don't think we're going to find out this year, but I do think the business of banking, particularly regional banking, is going to change. Um, well, how long will it take for us to figure that out? I think we have phase two still. I mean, you know, on the one hand, regional banks are very uh, supported politically. Everyone has a regional bank in their territory. On the other hand, they're going to find themselves asking for leniency during what I would consider phase two of this, because their exposure to commercial real estate in particular is worrying. That does not mean crisis. It doesn't mean imminent. But I think we will see the same kind of rolling wave of concern, which leads to loss of confidence and likely more failures. Well, I think it will make them un unsympathetic to give further leniency so, to. So maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon. We live in interesting times. And commercial real estate, we talk a lot about it for obvious reasons. It's certainly a, a weakness on many balance sheets. That said, it can't all be painted with one brush. There's office space, yes. 80 billion refinancings this year. But then there's industrial space. There's warehouses. There's so many other things that, frankly, don't seem to be nearly as impaired. It's true. It's not impaired. But let's start with the macro. Anything you bought in a period of low interest rates is now worth less. How much less is a question of performance of the asset, performance of cash flows, but everything is worth less. Even if your cash flows grew at 10% a year for the few years you've owned it, your real estate is worth less. Banks are not primarily equity owners of real estate. They are primarily lenders to real estate. But we've already seen, particularly in office, very challenging conditions which have led to people giving back the keys. I think we're just going to see more of that. And what's interesting about regional banks is they are exposed to a particular region so places like Chicago, places like San Francisco, other cities that are particularly suffering, those are the likely places to look for. So you for think the concentration damage. of geography and particular asset class is going to be a, a, a hindrance because there are those who say, well, at the end of the day, it's not going to add up to that big a hit to many of these banks given the diversity of their portfolios. I think in the system that's true, but for the bank, I don't think that's true. It's just what we've seen so far. Are, is, are the failure of these three banks relevant to the system? Probably not. All right. Well, you run a big insurer, the biggest retirement insurer, essentially, in Athene. You know, how secure is your funding model? <laughs> Fortunately, very secure. We actually run the two businesses. First, we have the asset manager, and second, we have the insurance company. We run two countercyclical balance sheets. First, institutional investors, pension funds, endowments, retirement systems, they know their funding for the next 20 years. One of the huge advantages they have over other investors is the ability to go long. Banks borrow short, lend long. Institutional investors borrow long and lend long. Insurers, particularly retirement services companies, are in the exact same position. We are almost as always as an industry counter-cyclical, and that's what people will see, and that's what we've seen so far this year. Amazing amount of money flowing into retirement services, particularly annuities. I would say the golden age of annuities. But we are borrowed you for think nine years. This is the golden age of annuities. Consumers have spoken. They prefer 5% to 2%. It's no more. It's, we can make it really complicated, but when they've had a decade of very low ability to provide for retirement income, all of a sudden they can lock in 5% plus tax-free for the next decade. They're doing it, and they're doing it in size. Uh, we're taking a look at a, a chart of Apollo right now. You and I have had this discussion in the past, but I think it's still a work in progress, meaning educating people and the investor, investing public how this company has changed. So many people still think private equity, big deals. <laughs> That's not what Apollo really is anymore, is it, Mark? I mean, no, it's much more about taking huge, chunky bets in credit and investment-grade credit. Even. Look, our entire industry was $40 billion of AUM, every one of the companies, plus minus, in 2008. We ended the year at $550 billion. Our peers also ended up much larger. 
Each of us made a different bet. Some bet on commercial real estate, some bet on infrastructure, some bet on subordinated debt. We went for the private investment grade market. That is the dominant franchise we have built. What we're seeing right now, particularly the turbulence in banking, these are the kind of assets we compete for. We want top of the capital structure, senior secured. We want to provide investors excess return per unit of risk, also our own balance sheet.